Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Hi, and welcome to TFYLP. Uh, we are doing a pre-record this week. Uh, so we're actually doing it the, uh, the weekend of Wonderfest, uh, but this is going to go out later, uh, not sure exactly what time, uh, but, uh, today with me, I've got, uh, myself, Lucas, I also have Sean with me. Hello. And then I've got Anna. Hello. So... So, uh, this week, uh, we, we are doing the, the timeless debate. Uh, I think we probably had a couple, couple similar debates on the show. Um, but, uh, we want to kind of talk about, uh, you know, whether or not Transformers, the, the, the current lines that they have out now, uh, you know, including, uh, the, the Siege War for Cybertron, the, uh, and Earthrise, um, the studio series, Cyberverse, all that. Are the are, are the lines, you know, really kind of meant for kids, or are they really kind of skewing more towards collectors? Um, and you know, kind of is that balance right? So I guess uh, this is actually Anna's topic. So I guess, and I don't know if you want to give kind of more background on uh, what your thoughts are on the topic. Well, the first thing I want to do is give a little context for when we're recording this. Like, as toys are coming out and those sorts of things, like, we're recording this as Earthrise is just starting to hit shelves and everybody would actually rather be out hunting for it than recording right now. And additionally, Cyberverse is starting to get pretty big, right? Cyberverse has actually kind of expanded to the point where there's deluxes, there's more diverse small figures. There's some one set changers that aren't terrible coming out. Like there's actually a good deal of figures. Bot bots is gearing up for like the fifth series, something like that. Um, these small, affordable, cute figures. Um, I think there's still a version of rescue bots out there too. Right. Uh, there's rescue bots Academy and I don't know. Yeah, she, okay. Like I haven't really been following it that closely. <clears throat> Sean, do you know, um, like what are the, what's the toy landscape out there for rescue bots? Um, they're still plentiful. You can still get like the older, like non Academy guys at your local store. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, the, the newer Academy guys are the same size, but they also have like a larger, like, uh, almost leader class size, but they're just the same small figures just blowing up bigger. But yeah, they're still, they're still cranking out rescue bots and, uh, we're still buying rescue bots. So, uh, in addition, so in addition to all that, there's also studio series on the shelves. So there's a lot of different transformers products and lines. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of diversity in who those lines are actually targeted to. So I think the, the topic for today that I wanted us to talk about is just what makes something the kid's line versus the adult line. Can you blur those lines? And is the idea of having so many collector-centric lines. There's like two and a half collector-centric lines out right now. Unless you count bot lots, then there's three and a half collector-centric lines out right now. And it's a question of does a collector-centric line kind of push out kids because the mentality I'm trying to like debate here is that there's some people who will say, you know, siege and earth rise and studio series. Those are definitely for the adult collectors, quote unquote, um, the group that we're usually talking to on this show. Whereas other people will literally say things like, Oh, well, what do you expect from this? from this Earthrise cliff jumper having a parts form 
what do you expect? It's a kid's line that has to work for children and parents have to be able to afford it. So it's like literally the same group of people using completely opposite arguments to argue opposite points. So I find that interesting. So I think I'd just like to talk about kind of the nature of, um, you know, what makes something kid accessible versus kid friendly versus actually targeted to kids and we won't look at it. Because I don't know about you guys, but the whole time, actually I do know because Sean has some of the figures, um, but the whole time Robots in Disguise ran, I completely ignored it because my brain labeled it as the kids line. So it was like, oh, I don't even have to look at this. Like, I'm not even going to consider buying figures from it, which I kind of regret because there were some good ones. But I was just kind of, I guess I just want to talk about that. So we can start with what makes something a kid's line versus a grown-up's line well, versus a collector's line. So, so, so first, I, I was just going to say, like, I know uh, Robots in Disguise, and I feel like Cyberverse is kind of the same way, where it's really started off as, like, a line solely for kids. And it just had the main characters in the show and whatnot. And I feel like as the lines have gone along, once they get into that second and third year, I feel like they start, like, kind of flushing it out with a little bit of, um, like, stuff for for collectors as well so like that i think you see that with robots in disguise where it started kind of like they started going back to that g1 well a lot more um in like seasons two and three than they did in the in the first season the first year so well to be for collectors it doesn't have to you know harken back to g1 it can be you know it can be um just a fun series that uh, adults would enjoy too or toys that adults would find interesting like the thunderhoof like even though like the yeah. rd guys were like a kid's line that thunderhoof was a really cool transformation and a cool character on the show and bisque bisque was fun <laughs> true Bisque is fun <clears throat> really fun um but uh but yeah I, i'm trying to think like i, I just lost my point you go, go on in you're welcome <laughs> yeah th- thanks <laughs> no I, I think you're right though like they did kind of start they played it safe at first, and then they got into more of the, like, you know, actually neat designs and new stuff and nicer figures and whatnot. I think Cyberverse has largely done something similar. It started with a different character base. Like, there are a few unique characters or different characters than you would usually have. Like, you know, for instance, there's actually, like, a consistent cast of um, woman characters as opposed to just, like, the main cast having one the one girl in it. So they've done some things differently, but they've really gone more into like bringing in fan servicey characters, especially fan servicey figures, um, trying to bring in more characters, stuff that appeals more to, you know, the collectors out there. Well, I, I would say uh, with Cyberverse too, I, I feel like that they really like the, the line of deluxes they have now, they're like 20 bucks with like a build figure that I think that that is really aimed at, collectors that i think that it's like people that you know our age or 20 or just whatever you know maybe they're older teens or or 20s whatever that um you know enjoy the show enjoy the media but they want something with more articulation and a better transformation like a little higher quality figure whereas you know uh kids that are are younger are fine with like you know stuff with no articulation or whatever i don't know like just, just out of curiosity, Sean, like, with Shane, like, the Cyberverse figures that you've bought, has has he been okay with the articulation and transformations and whatnot? Yeah, I don't think that he... I guess something about kids, they don't really care too much about hyper-articulation. Like, they don't have to have ankle tilts. They just want to be able to, you know, transform the character themselves and without right. taking a half hour. So, like... Like he really enjoyed he enjoyed rescue bots quite a bit because I mean we could sit there and play just within a half second have him transform to the next mode, but he has this box of older fig like like newer figures like with better articulation he uh, he likes to fiddle with them but he doesn't really uh, play with them too much you know he just kind of transforms them you know back and forth and uh, he doesn't really get them all out and uh, play like he used to with the rescue bots. Well, to me, I feel like uh, having, you know, various play features are actually pretty important for kids. 
Like I know that they they had that like uh, was it like spark armor or whatever that like the figures that kind of combine. Um, yeah, like those yeah. things. And yep. and what's weird is so like those were on the shelf um, like over Christmas and all that type of thing, right? But then like I feel like that they're kind of like already gone. I mean, they're, they're yeah. you can still find it, but I mean, I don't know. It seems it seems interesting that like they kind of threw that play feature out there just for like the summer and fall and through Christmas and now like I I, I don't know if Cyberverse if they're gearing up to kind of retool the show like. We haven't really heard about it, but like it seems like all the new packaging doesn't it have like Bumble? Isn't Bumblebee more prominent on it? I can't remember. It's There's like, like a subtitle. Versus... This is something. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Cyber vs. Bumblebee or something. or something like that. Yeah. So I don't know. They haven't really said anything about it, um, but I'm I'm curious if that's you know like if they're kind of just gearing up for like the third season of that show or kind of what the. Probably. So let's try to answer my question of what makes something like a kid centric or a kids focused line. So what is it about those spark armor figures that they don't have to make it a collector's line that the Cyberverse deluxe figures do have that makes that a collector's line? It would be paint and complexity and um, articulation. I think is what makes the collectors more keen toward other things. Cause you can get, you know, you can get the Cheetor in the masterpiece line or you can get a Cheetor in the spark armor line. So, and it, it, it's a, it just depends if you're a collector and you like the Cyberverse cartoon and you like Cheetor as a character, which I did. I bought the, uh, the Cheetor spark armor for Shane, but, uh, I played with it quite a bit too. <laughs> you know, I enjoy it. Yeah, that one's not bad. I had it for a minute. <laughs> well, one thing in general, like, um, I I feel like, too, uh, for it being for kids or not, is really, like, with price as well. So, because, like, if I'm out at Target with my kids or whatever, like, if I'm going to make an impulse purchase, you know, s- some of the Cyberverse figures that are, like, 10 or $12, like, you know, like, okay, sure, you want it, like, I'll, I'll get it for you or whatever, no, no big deal. But once you start creeping up to that like twenty five thirty dollar price point, like once it's twenty bucks or more, like it's kind of no longer an impulse purchase. I feel like like, like, like that could have been Daddy's Cliff Jumper. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like I don't know. Like, are are you buying? Like, I know, I know myself. Like, I usually. I don't know. For whatever reason, it's kind of like 10 or 15 bucks. I don't mind spending that as an impulse on my kids, but like somehow if you start getting more, like that $50 Optimus Prime with the, with the uh, arc, yeah. you know, like that was the thing. It was like, it was, I just felt like that was such a tough sell because it was for kids, but it's like $50. It's like, man, like that's just, I don't know. I feel like you really, your, your kid really has to want it for, uh, that- to get that. Isn't that something that they have to kind of balance and kid lines is having like the impulse buy figures, like the regular buy figures, and then like the birthday figures. I feel like you have to have like the figures that make good gifts. So you can be like, oh, you've been asking for Optimus, this stupid rectangle for mom, (laughs) I will get it for you. And you'll be so happy um, type of thing. And I feel like that's, well, I feel like that has a lot of implications for why leader figures are what they are these days. Because they, you know, that that price point used to be the birthday figure, but we all grew up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they're not the birthday figure anymore. They're just the, ugh, I have to spend $50 figure. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, I think in general with, with kids... Like, they, they run through media so quick. Like, I know my, my kids at least do that. I don't know. Like, I know my kids are big on Pokemon and, and, you know, a lot of kids are big on Legos and just different things like that where it's, it's a tough sell to, to where it's like when, my, when my kids are asking, you know, uh, uh, one, one of my kids just had a birthday and there was no Transformers on that list. So it's, that's the thing is, is that there's so much, so many other properties that you have to compete with these days for kids that it's, it's almost tougher. It's almost like more like, all right, you you locked in the collectors. So, and 
you know, I don't know. But but I, one thing I'm curious, though, with the Cyberverse, if you guys think some of the new uh, figures that, that uh, came out, like the uh, Quintessons uh, that came out, or the, uh, the, the little Sharktacon pack, and, like, things like that, like... Is that something like that Quintesson three pack? That's like a thirty dollar pack, you know, with three figures. Like, is that for kids yep. or is that for collectors? It's both because I bought the Quintessons because I mean I bought that pack because that's the only way to get Quintessons whose heads turn and are that fun. But then the other two figures I gave to Shane and he loves them. He likes to uh, put the little helmets on and pretend they're mind control devices and Quintessons are telling him what to do. So. It's uh, it's it's good if you have if you have a kid that's slightly into Transformers and uh, and you're heavily into Transformers. Hey, uh, look, look who's here! We uh, we have a surprise guest. You called me. Surprise that's true. Edition. You called me, so I showed up. Well, well, thanks, Christian. I appreciate it. Last minute and everything. So we we are in the middle of recording uh, right now. So just FYI. Okay. Uh, just your opinion with Quintessons. So, so but you, the Quintesson, it seems. So I don't, I don't have kids. I don't know if anyone didn't know that, but I don't. So a thirty dollar pack for that is originally it was no problem because like oh I'll get these two other toys and I'll get a Quintesson and it's great. But then I had a chance to play with it because I mean, it's an open package, so you can you know click the features and everything's cool. Mm-hmm. And I I messed around with it in the store and I was like this is not thirty dollars to me and it doesn't. There's that paint. The faces don't look like what they're supposed to look like. But everything would have been fine if we hadn't had a leaked listing for a Earthrise Quintesson. Right. It just feels it feels wrong to me to say no to a Quintesson at any point because in the whole 35 year history, there's only been one other one. And oh, this one has rotating one faces, and it's good enough, and it's like, I, it should be fine. But I kind of want to see what's coming. It's really little. Little. It's little. To me, it's little. But but that's know, he's, the other thing. He, he's bigger than a deluxe and smaller than a Voyager. Big enough to be a is an it, octopus is, creature. You're trying to compare a, a it to see? He does move, and if you paint, you can paint him up to look really cool. I, I you, you're complaining it. about things being too little, Anna, but yet, <laughs> like this is a deluxe. Let it. Um, <laughs> We would just like some consistency, Anna. Please. So, no! so one thing, though, I think I don't do consistency. The the one thing Cyberverse <laughs> has kind of been doing though is, is throwing in some like fan favorites though too. Like, that was isn't there like a Strika out there now, or what's what's that thing called? There's like a female one that. Oh, um, there's Clobber. 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 She's loving okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. But then also, isn't Rack and Ruin coming out too? And I will buy the crap out of that toy. Yeah. So. I mean, that's my hope the thing is, is, is if like we support the no... character in the kid show, it'll come as a real toy into the collector line. I and that's, that's why you case. haven't bought the Quintesson. Because it's already oh. coming in the collector line. Oh. <laughs> There's already a listing. <laughs> I don't need to buy it now. Yeah. And if it's no, not good, like, we'll see it at Toy Fair in two weeks from when we're recording this. <laughs> if you listen to it later, we've already seen it. But if it doesn't look good, then I'll just get a Cyberverse one. Because it's fine enough, but the faces aren't quite accurate enough to what I would want. I do think it is um, a brilliant juxtaposition that yesterday I do kind of want that clobber figure just because it's a new character and it looks okay. The $20 um, big-ish, I don't know, I'm going to call it a mega because it's like a Beast Wars mega figure to me. But um, that clobber is $20. That flips over, like it's just held up. Is twenty dollars. I passed up Clobber yesterday. I would not pass up that Club Jumper for anything, though. Like I really <laughs> want that darn thing. So it's interesting. Like the logic behind that just seems really flawed, but it's very much a like really want that. But the Clobber is like, I'm gonna hope that it goes down on clearance for ten bucks, and then I'll get it. You're not wrong. It's fine. It probably will. It probably will. But if it doesn't, I'm not going to be heartbroken. But I guess, like, we kind of strayed away a little bit from the topic at hand, just, like, kind of, you know, what makes it a kid's line. And I guess we kind of said that, you know, what makes it a kid's line is just limitations. 
and the figures. So is it bad for a kid's line when they put out more collector-esque figures? Like when you get like the deluxes, is that kind of like blocking kids out? So let's say that like they, they make those. There's two characters that, two or more? No, I think just two. There's two characters in the second wave of the deluxes that I don't think are represented otherwise, and that's RC and then the new guy. Um, I don't remember what the new person's name is. Some sort of animal-esque name. Hot Rod's in wave two, so is Megatron. Yeah, but then there's an, an animal name person. In wave two of Earthrise? No, 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 no. This is it. Set. No, no. It is still talking H about Cyberverse. the last Cyberverse. The person who like, has antlers in his picture. Thunderhoof? Yeah, I, I think it's Thunderhoof. I don't know. I, sure. I don't know. I don't follow. I, I, I don't know. I can't remember who's okay. in it. I guess so I can look it up on there. There are in Wave 2 who are not represented otherwise. So what I'm saying is say that like they put RC in the cartoon. I don't know if she's in the cartoon or not yet. Um, say they put her in the cartoon, a kid wants an RC figure, but it only exists as a deluxe. We said the deluxe was more complicated. Is that kind of blocking kids out? Well, I, I think that those deluxe figures actually are pretty easy. I, like, I, I don't think, I mean, my, my kid's been messing with the ones that I got and, uh, you know, he can transform them like just as well as the other ones. So I think that um, I, I don't think that most of those are like too complicated to where it's really going to block them out other than, you know, the higher price point. Um, but the other thing is, is like most of the Cyberverse stuff, like they have made every, almost every character in that, like multiple times over. So it's, <laughs> it's not like they, I'm sure that down the line they will probably have an RC and whatever other character that you're referencing. In yeah, there. whatever its name is. But it hasn't been that way for all the bad guys yet, though. Some of the bad guys have really limited releases, like um, Shadow Striker. Doesn't Shadow Striker still have, like, four toys? I think it's just two, and they're both terrible. Right, but like if you're a kid, I mean, you just want the character. One and a Legends one. I mean, I think the thing that was more frustrating, like, for R.I.D., like, did they actually even do all of the characters, like, all the bad guys in no. toy form. No. So that's the thing I would be more mad about is is that if they, like, have a character on the show, but then you can't get it in any kind of form. Yeah, well, they did a lot of them, and some of them, I mean, they were just, like, the little smaller guys. Some of them were deluxes, but, uh, yeah, they really missed out because the Monster a Week type Decepticons, those were, like, the stars of the show. So they really should have... Yeah, and those were all Pushed really neat, neat uh, so, characters as well. As far as cutting children out, you know, of the ability to get those characters that are only represented in the larger size classes, I don't... It's going to make me sound old. It's going to make you guys sound older. But all of us came up in a time where there wasn't a difference between the kid line and a collector line. That just It just was Transformers. You know, when Armada was on shelves, that's what was yeah. on shelves, and that's what I had. When Beast Wars on shelves, that's what I had. When G1 was on shelves, that's what you guys had. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. It didn't didn't stop us when we were kids from loving Transformers. And, I mean, that's the thing is, is, like, I think that... I think you do, for kids, that you definitely want to have some type of a cartoon or, like, visual media for yes. it. Like, not necessarily yeah. just a comic, but, like, you actually want the cartoon. Like, because that's, that's right. I just don't think that... Um, the, like the, the current like siege and earth rise and all that, like, I mean, I just don't think that my kids care as much for it just because there's not a cartoon for them to, you know, look back on or whatever and, and whatnot. And Maybe honestly, I that's a problem for me too. Like it actually kind of bugs me that it doesn't have a fiction to follow with it because it's just like every other, I collect other stuff very lightly. Every other thing I collect starts with the, the cartoon, the movie, whatever, the show. And then I pick out my favorite characters. Then I buy figures or statues or toys or whatever of them. But Transformers is like the opposite. I just buy them like 
regardless of the fiction. It's just like, I don't know what this version of Cliff Jumper is actually like. He may be a botanist who is a, an astute vegan. I don't know. Um, because he doesn't have a personality yet. He does come with a big cannon, which maybe suggests a personality, but... Well, I mean, they do, they are putting all of the, a lot of the toys and the toy models in the uh, comics. So yeah. if you read the comics, now, unfortunately, they don't actually give them any of them personalities. And so you still don't know what their personalities are, but they're at least in they're the comic. There. They're there. Join us in a few weeks for when everyone else debates how bad the comics are based on reading like two to five issues. God, two, I, two issues. I have read I have read like eight <laughs> issues of the comic and I hate it every time. Like Okay, yep. you're the I, most I informed. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I read five and I liked it. I, I don't know. Like I, I've never had this hard of a time getting through a Transformers comic as as this one, so Oh man, there were some really bad Transformers comics back in well, the day. Okay, back in the day, I wasn't reading Transformers comics. So. Okay, good. Back in the day, I was reading Transformers comics, and this is the most difficult one to get through. Yeah, Dream Wave was good compared mm. comparatively. Oh, Dream Wave was good. Anyway, but back right back on the topic is, but, uh, of the thing, one thing I do think is uh, interesting, like kind of switching over from Cyberverse to like the. Um, uh, to the classics, like, you know, Siege, Earthrise, all that type of thing. Um, I, I think that prior, like, the Combiner Wars trilogy and, you know, even some of the Thrilling 30 and whatnot, well, maybe not Thrilling 30, but at least Combiner Wars, um, that those all had to have a gimmick. Like, I feel like the, the new line... Like, I guess they have a gimmick in the fact that they have five millimeter ports, but like, I don't feel like it's like Titan's Return where everyone had to be a headmaster or everyone had to be a certain size or everyone had to be, you know, kind of uh, shoved in or like um, everyone had to be a combiner, just all that type of thing. Like, that's the thing that I really enjoy about the line now that we didn't have before. And so I feel like you could kind of see where. Previously, those lines were kind of like <clears throat> kids' lines that also included collectors, whereas I feel like now it's a collector's line that if kids want to collect it, you know, there it is. What do you guys think? I think I that... that at all. <clears throat> yeah, I think these two lines actually do have gimmicks, because um, they have the blast effects. That's a gimmick. And yeah, then they have mud. the... The what? Space mud. Yes, they have... That's not a gimmick, though. That's a that's a like that's a gimmick. attempted nicety that turned into a flaw. Um, but like, so they have the blast effects gimmick. But then the other gimmick they have is actually supposed to be this weapon system thing, right? Like that I think we just completely ignore that every weapon has like a little description and like this integration into a weapon system, and you're supposed to take apart the. Um, the take apart guys and use them as weapons. So you're supposed to equip the target masters and the weapon masters and now the ramp masters and the put ramp them masters. On the guys. <laughs> ramp masters are the best. <laughs> the ramp masters. I love it. Okay, proceed. So that that is a play pattern, though, right? So, that, some of us may be, uh, you know. Uh, uh, getting quite a few ramp masters. I don't know what. What's your count on on ramp guys, Christian? I've already ordered four sound barriers. Yeah. See, I've ordered. I think I got I'll three. Get four of the other ones too. There's two more at least. So. Yeah. I want to see the explanation of that in the fiction. I want to see the personality of a character whose whole job is to lay down and let people run over them to get up higher. <laughs> Well, so. they kind of cover that in the in the old IDW comics. I mean, it's not the same thing, but it's like where they had the the you know disposable transformers and things like that. Where you know, like in the whole class system, where certain transformers turned into yeah like smaller things that the other ones used and and whatever. So, no, I like think a, so what about? Itself. So well they, they turn into sections of road and like the Autobot ones will give you a boost like Sound Barrier gives you 
you know, supersonic speakers when you run over it. And then like the trap, the, the Decepticon ones are like traps. You run over it and they capture you and you die. I don't know. Yeah. But that's, that's a great play pattern for kids, though. Like, that's the kind of creativity I think a kid would have towards these things. Are you saying um, that good? Isn't that a good thing? Yes, yes, yes. Right, I definitely, cool. definitely prefer the play with my figures lifestyle than the just put them on a shelf and let them collect dust. Because dusting sucks. But but what I'm saying, though, is is like the older lines, like, you know, Titans Return was like this, where the weapons were all stupid because they had, like, tub weapons. <laughs> Or the heads, like, didn't, you know, a bunch of them didn't look right because they had to be a square head. And so if you had someone with a rounded head, it just didn't look right. Um, or you had all these characters that, like, aren't headmasters that became headmasters and they were probably worse off for it. Whereas, like, I feel like now, like, they're not, like, the, um, like, you're not shortchanging the characters with, like, what, is getting released. Like, I don't feel so. I mean, do you, do you think that there's any characters with whatever gimmicks are in this line to where you're like, Oh, that character, it would have been better off if it was released in a different time. It all depends on if you like the gimmick. Like I love headmasters and I was, you know, making my own custom headmasters and then Titans return was announced. And I was like, yes, I can rest and I don't have to make my own headmasters. And Every character was a headmaster. I thought it was cool because you can put them in the cockpit, you can put them on a gun turret, you know, you have all kinds of other play patterns with them. And I think for the most part, the head sculpts look good. But, I mean, to get back to your point, it was just, uh, it just depends on if you like the gimmick, if you're into the gimmick. Like, combiners, like, I know Will, he loves combiners. It was a problem with him, and he had to buy every combiner he ever saw. So, <laughs> um, I think that was an attempt to... And that was an attempt to service kids to like, like I think kids were supposed to like that, right? Yeah. But I, I don't know if it worked or not, honestly. Like I don't know if that was more fun for kids to have that like play period, play pattern. Oh no, it absolutely did. Like I thought, like I think at the time that uh, the Combiner Wars trilogy was a better toy line than, you know, what we're getting in the other lines. Like, my kids love, like, even the Power of the Primes, like, the little power-up Prime Masters or whatever that they were called, like, they loved, like, the little fiction that they would have on the cards, like, how they would power the the various characters up. Like, my my kid really liked that. They loved Combiners. Um, They loved the little Titan. The Titan Master guys that had, like, their own little ships, like the mini ships. They really liked Mm -hmm. those just because they were pretty easy to transform. And they came with a little head guy and and all that type of thing, too. So, like, I actually think that that was pretty successful. The only bad thing was is that there wasn't good media for it. Like, I think we we had those shows. But, like, I don't know. It was kind of largely forgotten because it was on. They were too late. Yeah. They were bad. And on an obscure service. And they weren't they weren't really kid friendly at all. Like those uh, those shows I don't feel like would have appealed to children. They didn't if they tried to, to watch anybody, them. Really. They didn't appeal, <laughs> right, they didn't appeal to anyone. <laughs> and you know the bad like, thing I can is, watch is Cyberverse. Who wants to watch a slow show that's only eleven minutes long? <laughs> Nobody. Well and, and the it's funny thing minutes. is is I feel like we're kind of repeating this with whatever this new show is going to be for uh, for Earthrise and Siege and all oh, that. Because, yeah. like, We're gonna I mean, have a show? Siege is done. Siege is done. And yeah. they're going to have a show come out. We haven't heard anything about the show in a year. I don't. I want to have faith, but I, I don't think it's happening anymore. I don't think they need a show to sell a toy. They don't What's need a show to, to sell a toy to us. They do need a show to sell a toy to kids, though. I really believe that. What we heard and the limited information that was was that the Seed show on Netflix is, was supposed to have been, there you go, there's a right tense, adult oriented, which I think is great. You know, I think there's a lot of story elements that they left kind of in there. Like, why was Impactor a Decepticon? Why was Mirage out there trying to convert him into an Autobot? What's up with that? Like, that seems like a good you know, three episode arc. Sure. But it's over. Siege is done now. Like, why? Why is it not out? Why can't they get get that in line? If they want to do it, do it at the same time. I could be just... swayed to buy more Siege figures. I guess. Well, the thing I don't really understand with the media in general is like, why don't they just put uh, bios on packaging or put the story on the packaging? 
Like it would it would make so much sense to do it that way and then like maybe you do some like limited um like stop motion or just what something on um on YouTube like s- kind of small commercial bites like or whatever where it's not like a full-fledged show but I think they could do that and they could actually time that with the toy, toy line I better and I can't answer that question actually and it's a stupid answer but it makes sense but it's also dumb and I hate it so if you look at the instructions, which I know we're all adults and we don't look at instructions anymore, but I look at instructions for everything I get. Instructions. And thank you. So for the Earthrise stuff, I was messing around with it last night. Uh, what, what was it? The Like you had to connect Clipjumper's gun or combine the Micromasters into something. And it just had like combine, like the word combine. And they had it listed in about... 40 different languages over and over and over uh, and over and over, uh, and over and over and over again. So they have to have that multilingual packaging now because they're not doing packaging variants. Right. So there's no room to have 40 different languages of uh, you know, paragraph that or makes two sense. of stuff. Do you see it? Do you see what I'm talking about? It's kind of right yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Like, What's the word? Where is it? It's right next to Clip Jumper's vehicle mode. You just showed it on camera, actually. Flip it over. Like right, yeah. this. Yeah, that. What is right. that? Yeah. Um, retain instructions for future reference. That's pretty much what it says. And God, then it's in like word there. forty yeah, languages. There so that's what. But that doesn't mean they couldn't put online bios. They do it for all the bot. Right. Every single bot bot has a paragraph of text. And there's you know over two hundred fifty of them now. Every single one has stuff. Why can't they write stuff for you know, the Earthrise guys, the, the Siege guys? So, so one what thing I will say about Earthrise, and I don't know what's exactly going on with it, right? But they are doing somewhat of a story on it. But uh, one thing I will say, I love these new instructions. They are freaking fantastic. Doing them with green on it, you can see it so much easier than like when they were doing it with gray. So number one with that. But then the other thing is, is um, they seem to be doing something on the box. Like if you look here, there's like these little sections of like a map and every single uh, figure comes with a little decoder thing. Um, like yeah. still, it's planets. Yes. Yeah. So I think that they're at least trying to do something like with the, with the packaging, I guess. So I guess I, I shouldn't complain too much. It, it does I seem guess like which one of us is going to clip out all of those and put them all together in the end. Yeah. I, I've already got them on the wall with strings connected to each planet <laughs> to try to figure out what's going on. You should beat you to it. Yeah, what I was going to say, though, the, is... Back when they announced the line, but each package contains a map of Cybertron. Or map, map to yeah. Earth. Whatever. Map of the galaxy. What I was going to say is what they could do is they could follow the um, they could follow the model of Japanese legends and they could have an utterly bonkers off the rails comic book story packaged in the toys. Yeah. You know they did that <laughs> back in Armada and Inter- Energon. That was really fun. Those are cool. They were, it was the same pack and comic. Nobody for, cares about you know, Armada and Energon. Two. Everyone cares about Armada. But I like those comics. Those <laughs> I was comics. listening to the podcast and you guys were making fun of uh, Armada and Energon, so I have and to throw that in there. Was. I'm not a fan of those. But I, I don't think you were on Christian. I think the rest of us were. So. I wouldn't have I will say when, it. <laughs> when I brought those home back in the day, like the Armada figures, and I opened up that little comic, that was actually really cool to me. Like, I was mm-hmm. still a teenager at the time, and that was actually appealing. It got me interested in the story for a minute until I saw the animation quality, and then I completely went away from it. But I just did not like Armada. Anyway, though, like, that was cool, though. It got me invested. It got me interested. Um, and I think that would be cool, even if it was a bonkers off the rails story like the Japanese legends are. Yeah, but I so, think like a, as you were saying though, th- like if you have to do it in all these different languages or whatnot, that's not going to work. Because right. like I know yeah, uh, for Combiner Wars and uh, the Thrilling Thirty line before that, they were including IDW comics for the U.S. releases, but that wasn't the case internationally. Like, I think they had them for Canada, but then. I think in Europe did they I can't 
I can't remember if they actually. Yeah, I don't so think they, they had did. different packaging, which had smaller cards, and they came with the collector card instead of uh, the comics. Mm. So for all of our friends out there, has card only in Europe. Yeah, I, I totally forgot because um, I know Scotty was uh, the other day was was texting about that or uh, uh, put a tweet out that uh, was it the Stunicons I think or something like I can't remember it was like s- some line and I totally forgot that like Wave One of Combiner Wars didn't have cards with it it had or no didn't have the they had cards instead of the comics I think or something it was one or the other Titans and- Return. The cards. Titans Return did, but what I'm saying is, is Combiner Wars had comics, but the first wave yeah. it came out it was thrilling when it, thirty when it when the first wave of Combiner Wars came out, like it didn't mm-hmm. have the comics packed in with it. Like I think yeah. later ones did that, sh- and they showed up in like Europe mm-hmm. or whatever. And so <laughs> I totally forgot that that was the case, but I guess that's one of those packaging variants that uh, you know c- certain collectors are after. Yeah. Anyway, though, as we were saying, like, a fiction really helps. So I'm curious, though, how do we think that BotBots is doing with kids? Because BotBots is the line that I feel like was supposed to grab the kids. It was supposed to be a kid-focused line. And and I'm hoping that it works. So you guys all know that I run the BotBots group on Facebook. Oh, yeah. It's been open for a year and two months now. I opened it on Christmas uh, 2018. And I did not get the clientele I was expecting to get. I was expecting to get, you know, other collectors like me who would like <laughs> have to switch around and, and get stuff. But who joined my group was moms. Yep. A few dads, but like mainly moms. <laughs> yep. That group is at least half moms. And those moms are trying to trade for their, their kids. Mm-hmm. So it seems like this it's really very cool. popular and they're trying to complete sets for their, their children. And that that's interesting to me because I think that, like, to me... The line that really lacks a cartoon is Bob Bots. Like, they need to... I know there was that little um, stop-motion animated short over the holidays, but I think, like, Bob Bots with a cartoon would really sell the figures. Absolutely, it would. <laughs> it would also have, like, already, like, 300 characters in it, which would be terrified. They're multiplying faster than Pokemon. But it would, it would still be great. I, I don't necessarily know that BotBots needs <laughs> fiction. As, I mean, it it would be great if it, it had it, but I actually think that really it just needs more advertising. Because I think right. that every single kid, like, because, um, you know, my kids, I have, I have a ton of BotBots, and, like, kids swarm to those BotBots. Like, they love them. Like, they think they're great. Um, and so I, I think a lot of it though is, is they probably just don't know that they're there, especially considering that like Walmart isn't really carrying them anymore. Um, so, so yeah. So like in, in Target, I mean, I guess if you go to the Transformers section or whatever that you can find them, but I, I think it's like more of a, it'd be nice if they could actually put some fiction out there just to put as cart as, uh, commercials for like YouTube or something like that. And they have yeah. this, this cool song that was part of the only animation they've done. Like, the Bot Bot song is incredibly catchy. I'm not going to sing it for you, but it's there. But, Sing it. Yeah, it's great advertising. It's like here a bot, there a bot, everywhere a Bot Bot. It's awesome. So old That's McDonald perfect. had a Bot Bot. E-I-E-I-O. No. But I think like with Bot Bots, no. like, you could get away with making like little like five-minute cartoon segments. Make like six or Cyber seven of them. Right? They're, they're, they're the 11 minute. They're the half. Oh, yeah. I think. It's still they bad. are, right? But yeah, he's yeah, watching a lot of them. is fine. Five minute segments. Five versus yeah, not good. but then you could, you could pepper those little five minute into like the programming blocks on like Cartoon Network or whatever other cartoon area mm-hmm. that kids watch. And you could just get them to watch little bits. It doesn't have to really have a plot. It doesn't have to make sense. We've learned that about cartoons recently. They don't have to make sense to be successful with kids. Um, and I think that would just get them to want them more, like to enjoy them more, even if they were kind of like inconsistent, goofy nonsense. Yeah, BotBots has the opportunity to just be you know, slapstick. It doesn't need a broad, overarching, deep story. All they need to do is you know, cause trouble, mischief, and you know, have a fun resolution at the end of the day. Done. I did not know that you didn't like Cyberverse. I am 
I am shocked because I actually really like surfers. We can't like the same thing. No, it seems <laughs> to be the case. I have to like I've these tried are it different than two or three times to get through, and it's I've gotten up to episode four, I think, and it's just bad. It's yeah, really bad. I actually like it. It's like to me, it's like Transformers Prime Junior. I, I feel I like we have a theme Prime going here. Prime. We, we seem to have a theme where I think Anna just likes bad media. No, Anna That's likes different probably. things. Anna <laughs> likes it when things are original and different. You all like, like animated stuff. That's okay. <laughs> animated was very original. It's probably the most original thing we ever got. And it was I know, and I was a stupid kid at the time, and I was like, eh, it looks different. I don't like it. I grew out of that. <laughs> I have I'm evolved. Than you, and I wasn't like that. <laughs> Yeah, because you were significantly you younger. I was 16. Yeah, that means I was 26. Uh, that means you had issues when you were 26. I did. <laughs> <laughs> animated is amazing. But animated is a good example of a, a line that wasn't a kid's line. Right. But I think, I think the fiction kind of determines how we view it. Cause, yeah. Um, animated wasn't aimed at kids necessarily because there's plenty of stuff for us to enjoy there. Mm-hmm. Prime wasn't aimed at kids because there's plenty of stuff for us to enjoy there. Robots in Disguise was aimed at kids. Cyberverse yeah. is aimed at kids. Like, they don't even try to include the other fans. I think that yeah. is one of the major differences that we have to see between, you know, uh, uh, War for Cybertron trilogy stuff and then Cyberverse stuff. So what, what to you, Christian, because you weren't here when I first asked the question... What makes those two lines aimed at kids where animated wasn't? Because when I was 26 and trying to be a G1 elitist, I definitely thought animated was aimed at kids and I was too cool for it. So tell me <laughs> why these are aimed at kids were too cool. It's the, it's the lightness of the material and it's the, I don't know, the, e- the ease of getting into the fiction. The, it's, the, it's how the fiction is written. Because animated, even though it had kitty points, it wasn't it wasn't light handed with the consequences of the actions. It, you know, it had deep characterization. Cyberverse, it doesn't have that. It, what it has is, oh look, Bumblebee's fun. He does dances, and you know, the the Decepticons fall over, and yay, done. Whereas you know, the first episode animated is like, oh crap, Optimus dies. If Starscream is a, a legit threat, they have to team up together. Spoiler get alert. Get over their issues together and, and defeat Starscream. One Decepticon that defeat him. And otherwise, in Cyberverse is like, oh, Windblade's here, but she's sad because Bumblebee doesn't remember her. And now they've got to, oh no, the show's over, it's 11 minutes. It's, it's just, it, it's, the, it's different. The fiction doesn't work. It's, How dare it's not, you put emotions in my Transformers fiction? <laughs> Well, that, that's what they don't do in Cyberverse. There's nothing there. It's all surface level. It is pretty surface level. It is pretty surface level. There have been a couple episodes. So I'm only through the first season. But there's been a couple episodes that I thought were actually adult enough. And actually kind of full box. Just a few here and there. While still being kid-friendly, mostly. It's kind of how I feel about the comic, though. If you're not going to be able to grab me in the first... You know, two episodes. Why well, do I don't need to stick around? I gave I gave the comic you know, five issues to not suck, and it sucked. I gave Cyberverse show four episodes to not suck, and it sucks. I don't, I don't like to be negative. I try to give everything a chance, and it just. I gave uh, Robots in Disguise a whole season to not suck. And it was okay every now and then, but that wasn't enough to keep me interested. Yeah, I, I think the show Robots in Disguise I think was like a much different show in its like second and third seasons. So you might actually go back and give it a try, just because yeah. like the, like the first season was like Monster of the Week, and then the subsequent seasons there was more like a um, like an ongoing storyline. Maybe. So. Yeah. I've heard yeah, that like season two sometimes. of Cyberverse is better. Now that I should try that, but. So, so my question though, you know, is are there like the fact that like right now we have, uh, you know, Earthrise like it's coming in siege and whatnot, and then we also have studio series um, on the shelf. Is is that too many collector lines? Um, 
I, I realize it's kind of aimed at two different markets. Like, you know, the Earthrise is kind of aimed at, you know, 40-year-olds, and I think the Studio Series is probably aimed at people that are older, or, or I'm sorry, younger. Um, but is it is it too much to have, like, multiple collector's lines, like, on the shelf for oh. one property? So I don't think so, but I'm, I'm going to remind us that we were trying to focus on, like, the kid line aspect. I do think that it's easy to have too many kid lines. I don't really think you can overdo it for collector's lines because we're ridiculous. I think Walmart thinks it's too many collector's lines. Because Walmart seems to have dropped Siege and therefore Earthrise, it seems, and BotBot. So what they have now is Studio Series and Cyberverse. But they don't have you know, Cyberverse, BotBot, Studio Series, and Cybertron. They're going all in on Cyberverse, though, right? As far like as I can stocking tell. it? Yeah. I think just nobody's buying it, so it just stays there. That might be the problem. But no, I don't think it's too many collector's lines. I I enjoy collecting both of them very much, but I'm I'm of the age where the movies were you know important to me. Not yeah, amazing. I, you... I never thought they were amazing, but they were there and they mattered at the time. Yeah. I think you don't kill collectors with number of figures. I think you kill collectors with price of figures. I don't think you can so much overwhelm us with the number, though. That's probably true. Because I've never heard anybody complaining like, oh, there's too many Siege figures. But I hear people complaining constantly about the price of MP. Well, but that's different. That is ridiculous. I mean, that's that's different, though. I mean, I don't know. I thought you were going to say about people complaining about the price of Siege. Because I've heard people people complain about that. People Um, do complain about the price of Siege. Like, Cliffjumper is... People are going to be complaining about Cliffjumper for the next 67,000 years. That he was too much money. And people complained about um, people complained about Jetfire because it was like, oh, there's a new price point and it's too big of a number. It's totally worth it. $45 uh, for Jetfire. Just saying. <laughs> Shut up. Not everybody got that shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I think the yeah, price hurts us more than quantity. But I think quantity does hurt the kids. Fines. Yeah, because I think that most kids, like, again, where they're pumping out the main characters, and it's important to always have those main characters on the shelves, but at the same time, it's like, okay, like, once you buy, um, you know, I don't know, whatever, Bumblebee, or once you buy uh, Shockwave or something like that, like, you're not going to buy another one for your kid. Right. I I don't know that it's important to always have those characters on shelves. And again, this is a whole back in my day thing. But back in my day, that did, that was a thing. You just you had when they were available, and then that was it. That is true. Well, that's where they learned from that because back in the eighties, like they had issues because like He Man and Transformers died out because they didn't have Optimus Prime on the shelf constantly. And He Man, same way with the Skeletor and He Man or whatever, that they didn't have those guys on there. And they started getting like the deep cuts, and so then it like the line died off because it wasn't bringing new people into the line. But Christian made a point though, because really this whole keeping the main characters on the shelf thing didn't start until the movies. Because like the the Unicron trilogy, you know, there was an Optimus in every line, and that was it. And then you get a rebate everything, sometimes, right? Everything before that was about the same too. But then when the movie started coming out, it was like every line needs at least one of the main characters. At every size class, really, because every size movie class one had you know, two, lead, two, three, lead, three leader figures and two Voyager figures and a couple of Legends figures. Yeah, because I feel yeah, like those... back in the day, there would have been a chance that Earthrise would have had an Optimus, or a chance that Earthrise would have had a Megatron. Now it's like, you know that Earthrise is going to have both those guys and Moonfall or whatever the last one's called is also going to have each of those guys. But at the same time, though, like, so there's been an Optimus in all of those lines, right? Do you see Optimus Prime on the shelves? Like, do you see that character being clearanced? 
I don't. Not really. I see it. It's other characters that go and then end up shelf warming or going clearance. Like that will always sell, and that's the reason why they do it. Is you know one because it's always going to sell, and two because it's inter- There's always going to be constantly new kids, and like it's important for those kids to always have at least Bumblebee and Optimus on the shelf at all times so that they can have their favorite character. We did see that through Robots in Disguise. I mean, how many times do we see Strong Arm and Grimlock and side not sideswipe so much, but Strong Arm and Grimlock got repacked a lot. Yeah, yeah, saw them a lot yeah. of times. Sideswipe, not so much, I don't think. I could be wrong about that. No, they repack Sideswipe a fair amount, too. Okay, cool. Uh, I never yeah. saw him hanging on shelves, so he must have been popular. No, I, I think I think he was, yeah. Good. And Cyber versus Darren, Darren, too. But... So, yeah, yeah. So I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm... Line. What, what I was going to say, though, is is that I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what ends up happening because I feel like toys in general, like, almost are more appealing to 20- and 30-year-olds more than they are to kids. And the question is, is obviously, like, that you can sell it now. There's all this nostalgia for that stuff now. But I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, um, however many years down the line... 10 years from now, 20 years from now, or whatever, like what, you know, not the company is probably thinking about that, but. Toys as decoration has definitely become more of the norm than it was when we were kids. Yep, that's definitely true. Like, if I just had a couple toys out of my house, like, people would think nothing of it. People just think I'm weird because I have this entire room. I think we all have entire rooms, right? I was going to say, we we don't think you're weird, Anna. The four of us do, yeah, that's for sure. But I mean, like, I'm not going to go around campus and find all of my colleagues having their toy collector rooms. (laughs) Right, that's a ridiculous notion. It's kind of funny. Well, do do we have any other topics that we're wanting to cover, Anna? Uh, or have we kind of covered everything um, you I wanted mean, to? I think we've, we've gone nearly... Who's making the crunchy sounds? Sean. Sean, is that you? Sean! I can't help it. <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> you have to crunch. <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think we're at nearly an hour... Yeah. Um, and I think the last point I had was something that we've kind of covered a little bit again before Christian was here. And that's the idea of does it hurt? Um, does it hurt the kids line to throw in little bits of adult collector fan service? So, you know, those Sharpticons and quintessence on the shelves right now, those are, you know, targeted to get us to buy them. So are those going to, like, actually, you know, have a negative impact on the toy line or a positive impact or no impact? Well, who doesn't love baby sharks? Oh, God. You're right. That does hit the baby shark. Craze. <laughs> well, <clears throat> shark I cons, I bought those in um, Titan's Return or, yeah, Titan's Return. So, yeah. or Nuz Power of the Primes. Yeah. So, um, Titan's Return. You're right. I like those better than the uh, little cheapy Shark Tacons that are in that pack. So, I'm just sticking with my regular Shark Tacons. So, like Shark Tacons stuff, Scraplets. I kind of wish that they made little mini Scraplets. Like, I like that larger one that they did. Um, but, man, if they had a pack of little Scraplets, like, I, that'd be pretty neat. And how do you think that those figures that you were talking about would have a negative impact because i'm trying to think of how it would happen the best i can see is or the worst i can see is no impact well the the reason i think they might have a negative impact is just they might shell form because like mm-hmm. the the quintessent like just isn't it isn't a cool toy it is a it is a tower with rotating faces right that's not as fun to kids as a new transformer I'm kind of assuming that it's supposed to be in the show because it's got if that it mind really control yes. thing with Shockwave and Prowl, like the Quintus song. I don't know. If, if that's the case, then I think it's fine. Oh, 
noise? I don't know. They just got to my area in the past week and a half or so, so I can't tell how much they're shelf warming. Yeah, yeah, me neither. I, I just saw them myself like yesterday and had to not look too close at them, or I was going to buy those little sharks because those are way cuter than I thought they'd sharks. be. Probably will. They're way cuter than I thought they'd be. <laughs> they actually appeal to me with their cuteness. But I think, like, I guess more the reason I was, like, wondering if fan servicing for us might get in the way is just with the existence of things like the deluxes. I think that might get in the way a little bit more. But maybe not. Maybe it's harmless. I mean, I think that... Fan servicing stuff. I think that they are always thinking about that, and that's something that is, like you know, that the retailers are thinking about as well. So I don't necessarily know that they care. Like, I mean, outside of like main characters, I know they probably try to push the good guys more, um, bright colors more and, you know, stuff that, you know, boys are going to like. So, you know, monsters or cars or dino, you know, dinosaurs or whatever. So like, I think as long as they're kind of like hitting a lot of those kind of notes, um, I, I think that it's, it's fine, so I don't know. I'm I'm kind of curious on Cyberverse and some of that because I feel like there's a fair amount of like bad guys that are coming out. Um, I'm kind of yeah. I'm I'm kind of curious like how how that's gonna you know work out um, for them if it's gonna sell because I mean you know like I don't know like if the Megatron and the Star Scream and all those kind of things is like one up shelf forming. Yeah, as far as I've watched, there were definitely more bad guys than good guys in the show. Um, because there were only a few central good guy characters. I think where I stopped is where they were starting to add new people. Like, Grimlock had just shown up and all that stuff. But, um, anyway, I guess, like, the, the way it could be a problem, just slightly, is if, say, you know, right now the deluxes are still, like, showing up in people's stores and the collectors are still going out and buying all of them, as we tend to do. But once that stops, are they going to shelf warm more? Because parents will see them and be like, ugh, that's too complex. My five-year-old is going to break it. Um, and therefore they won't sell as much as, say, the warrior class or the stupid half-transforming little guys. Okay. I feel like that's more of an issue after the fact than, like, for for the actual line. Like, I think when most parents are going and picking, like, stuff out off the shelf for their kids, like, they're just like, oh, here, you wanted Bumblebee. Here you go. Here's here's Bumblebee. But then if you, like, get it home and the kid can't transform the figure and you can't figure out the figure or whatever, you probably aren't going to buy more. Yeah. No, I definitely, I have a friend who got... When the Bumblebee movie came out, his, like, um, oh, what do you call it? Grandparents of his child, whatever, grandparents-in-laws, bought um, his kid one of the, like, medium-complexity big Bumblebees. Um, And, you know, his kid's five. And his kid can't figure it out. He actually can't do it for his kid because he wasn't into Transformers ever. So it's like, when I came to visit, I transformed it for them. But otherwise, it was just kind of like this useless block. And he said, nope, not getting you any Bumblebee stuff. Just stick him with bot bot or not bot bots, but um, rescue bots. Yeah. So. Rescue so, yeah, bots, I think, it can... I think, does incredibly well. You guys probably already talked rescue, about rescue bots. Oh, we did a little bit. Okay, cool. Go ahead. What are your thoughts on rescue bots? Oh, just it got a sequel series to hit the same age of kids again. So I think. I mean, that, that means it's doing very well. Good job, Rescue Bots. I hope Rescue Bots continues forever. I really do. Hey, it is, it is a really neat show. And it's kind of nice, too, where it it doesn't focus on, um, like, violence or whatever. Like, it's more helping people. And, like, mm-hmm. the bad guys are kind of, like, trying to create situations. But it's not like they're they're not trying to kill the good guys. They're just trying to, like, whatever, like, take over the world or whatever. Right. No, it's been more kid-safe plots. And it's also, like, I feel like it's done an excellent job of staying exactly what it is. Like, it has been the, like, big, blocky, simple, Tonka-style Transformers line with a, like, with a cartoon that kids can start watching when they're toddlers. 
and watch until they're, you know, a few years older than that, until they're starting school, probably around that time. Mm. Um, I feel like it's managed to stay that instead of hitting this, like, middle ground where Cyberverse is, where it's like, eh, we're throwing in some G1 crap, and we're trying to, like, put out a little bit of a collector's line and all that stuff. Like, it's just stayed nicely in that spot where it's like, this is the kid's first Transformers line, and then they can get into the other stuff later. And I honestly feel like they've tried to make a a, a stairs, a steps, where it's like, you start with Bot Bots, you go to Cyberverse, you go to the collector's lines. But I'm not sure it exactly works. That's legit what they do. I don't know if you guys get to see the shareholder stuff. Yeah. I'm a shareholder, so I get the shareholder stuff all, uh, every year. And that's what they do. They're, they're targeting different demographics with their right. shows. So Rescue Bots is, what are we in, year 10 of Rescue Bots now? It's been around forever, it seems. Yeah. I think, it's, I think the show, the first show, was the longest running Transformers show of all time. Yeah. I think that just goes to show that it's a, a testament to that age group how it's working the parents love it kids love it you know rescue bots forever i'll never watch it unless i have a kid but like i'll never watch it that's okay i want it to exist to get that demographic yep cyberverse and uh, robots in disguise before it seemed like they're not quite hitting that middle mark because they have to keep refreshing it yeah yeah i mean i'd rather watch rescue bots than um some of the other kid shows out there, so I'll gladly sit to Rescue Bots. I oh, yeah. It wasn't bad at all. I watched yeah. it for a couple hours with my friend's kid once. It was okay. cool. Wedge and Hotshot now. That's amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, the original series wasn't too bad. and They introduced, they introduced a couple cool characters that uh, I kind of enjoyed, too. Yeah. So all I guess, right. like, the, the, the take-home message that we've come to is that we we Transformers think that, for all. Yes. We think that a kid line requires a cartoon. We think that a kid line requires figures the kids can get into and like. And we think the Rescue Bus does this the best. Mm-hmm. And then Cyberverse does it awkwardly. Excellent. There's my. That's my last word. I, I, anyone else have any other final thoughts? That was very succinct as far as summaries go. Uh, I just want to say, uh, if you like us and you like what we do, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash TFYLP. Uh, tiers from a dollar, uh, you know, all the way up. Um, and then also check out our other shows. We've got, uh, microcasters Tuesday nights at, uh, nine 30 Eastern, uh, eight 30 central. Uh, we've got ouch my wallet at the same time. Uh, and, uh, we've got cut the tape. Uh, the last episode of, uh, you know, it se- seems like Rick has been doing some interesting things with that, forcing me to edit. So, uh, if you, if you want to check that out as well, that's, that's been kind of a fun fun show as well so uh so yeah so that's the that's the lineup and uh we will catch everyone later thanks for watching listening transforming rollout